morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. Our number is 844-236-6010. And we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, skin health, or true skin health products, or our new bone broth protein, which you can get at brightsidehealth.com. You can give us a shout, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Of course, if you want to purchase Young Jeffy products, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase products by calling the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling 866 735 2470. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. Once again, we're talking about the ketogenic diet. There's really so much to say. I know I've been talking about it for probably months if you if you include uh, all our digressions. The ketogenic diet is a fat burning diet and it's a fat diet. It's an eat fat get thin diet. Eat fat get skinny. I love that idea. Fats are so darn important for a biochemical reason, for, for biochemical reasons and for health reasons, but they're also important for taste reasons. There's a reason why we love fat so much. Aside from the fact that our brain needs it and we're hardwired to go for fat, fat amplifies flavors. Fat is an, a flavor amplifier. It, it helps uh, flavor molecules coat the, t- uh, coat the tongue a little bit more effectively. And flavor molecules tend to be fat soluble also. And medicinal compounds that are found in plants and medicinal compounds that are found in spices are also fat soluble. So not only will, it keep, will fats help you uh, make t- will, will amplify flavors, but they'll also help release nutrients from foods, particularly what are called phytonutrients. And this is really important for a lot of reasons, but especially for skin health. These fat-soluble nutrients, flavonoids and carotenes, beta-carotene, everybody's heard of that one, lutein, zeaxanthine, you'll see these kinds of pigmented, or uh, these kinds of uh, phytonutrients, which are pigmented, you'll see them in eye vitamins or eye supplements, Occutive from Longevity. Um, what else? Vision FX from Longevity. There's another uh, eye vitamin you can get called Occuvite. We used, to, we used to dispense that in the pharmacy, Occuvite. All of these contain flavonoids because, and carotenes, these pigmented phytonutrients, because pigments are really important for the eyes. Fucoidin and algaes, also seaweeds, these also contain pigments which are important for the eyes. Here's the problem, though. These pigments, these phytonutrient pigments, are difficult for the body to absorb because they're fatty. Remember, fats stick to foods. Fats stick to things. Peanut butter sticks to the knife. Jelly doesn't stick to the knife. Peanut butter sticks to the knife. Fats stick to things. Fats stick to foods. Fatty vitamins, vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, certain uh, fatty phytonutrients, essential fatty acids. Fats in 
vegetables and fruits stick to the food, which is why we have a gallbladder and a liver, which is why you need your gallbladder, which is why if you have liver disease, and one-third of Americans do, you are going to have problems pulling fatty substances from foods, pulling out the pigments from foods. They're going to go right through you. That means you will be depriving yourself of very important nutrients. No matter how much veggies you eat, if you don't absorb the phytonutrients because you don't have a gallbladder, it doesn't matter. Or if you have liver disease, or an intestinal problem for that matter, or a pancreatic problem, or a stomach problem, or any digestive health issues. Probiotics are important for fat absorption. So you can, take all the, you can eat all the salad you want, but if you're, have, if you're compromised in your ability to pull these fatty materials out of your salad, you're not going to get the benefits of the nutrients. That's why I always say you want to slightly heat your Brussels sprouts and broccoli and whatever cauliflower, whatever veggies you want, the pigmented veggies, and, and I said slightly, by the way, you never want to heat things too much, slightly steam perhaps, and use butter and coconut oil on top of your veggies. If you're eating a salad, use some kind of, I know, I know, this is heresy, use some kind of oil on top of it. Not a lot, make sure the oil's fresh. You know, I know the whole thing about oils, we talk about this all the time. My opinion is oils are too valuable to not, to avoid. Be careful, respect the oil. Make sure it's fresh, make sure it's in a dark bottle. Make sure you're keeping it in a cold place. Make sure it's cold pressed. You don't want supermarket oil. If you see oil in a clear bottle at the supermarket, that's an oil you want to stay away from, and that's an ignorant, ignorant way, in my opinion, to store an oil. That's like you might as well stick a, a, a label on top of your clear oil bottle that says uh, rancid oil contained within or uh, nutrient deficient oil contained within. All vitamin E removed, all vitamin E oxidized, all uh, essential nutrients oxidized in this oil. If you, uh, the companies might as well stick a label on there that says that if they're dispensing it in a clear bottle and they're selling it in the supermarket. That's a bad thing. French fries and cooked fats, a very bad thing. However, the nutritional value in a, in a tight, uh, super, super clean, or I shouldn't say clean, but uh, unprocessed oil, protected oil, honored oil, respected oil is just too valuable, in my opinion, to, to avoid, especially when it comes to pulling nutrients out of salads and making them taste better, especially if there's salt and pepper and spices, because they, you get this, this double benefit from fats. There's a reason why we love fats. I always hear people talking about chocolate and how healthy chocolate is because it has magnesium, it has iron, but they don't tell you it has all this crappy fat in it. They have to put crappy fat in it to make it flavorful. Anyway, ketogenic diet, high fat diet, eat fat, get skinny diet. Ketones are high energy compounds. They're produced from certain kinds of fats and the body will under conditions of low carbohydrate will process fats under conditions of low carbohydrate. That's the important part here because we're all getting plenty of fat. We're all eating a high fat diet, but we're getting a high carb with it. And so if there's carbs present, if there's sugars present, the body's going to burn the carbs first. But if there's no carbs, it's going to be forced to go for, the, uh, go for the fat to get energy and that's where the ketones come in. The bright side diet that I've been talking about for years is a ketogenic diet. It's a modified ketogenic diet. The true ketogenic diet is a medical protocol. It's an official medical way of eating. It's not some kind of new age, you know, alternative medicine idea. The ketogenic diet is tried and true, doctor approved, medical model approved. It's an official protocol for seizure disorders, for seizure disorders that are refractive or that are uh, seem to be uh, uh, non-responsive to Tegretol and Dilantin and uh, all the other uh, anticonvulsants, which in the world of pharmacy, in the pharmacopeia, are among the deadliest, toxic, most awful drugs there are. I've talked about that. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here and talk about the history of pharmacy, but it is kind of fascinating how uh, in the 1930s when Dilantin came out, all of a sudden nobody, wanted, nobody knew about the ketogenic diet. You know, what's one of the interesting things about how uh, scientific ideas advance is the fact that it only takes about two generations for us to completely change our ideas about what's right and what's wrong when it comes to health or when it comes to scientific ideas. Two generations is 40 years. So within 40 to 60 years, we've forgotten old ways of doing things. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we're back on the bright side. Got a couple lines open at 
844-236-6010. My pharmacist, Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs. I look at the body as a healing system, a regenerating system. I never like the idea of drugs. I still don't like the idea of drugs. Not that you don't need them sometimes, of course. I'm not Pollyannish about this, but the idea of using prescription medicine to deal with chronic degenerative disease does not help anybody, period. Perhaps in the short run, the very short run, if you're com- you know, completely miserable, you want to suppress your inflammation. But inflammation is the body's protective response. How crazy is it to suppress inflammation artificially? How crazy is it to put emergency hormones into the system, in terms of prednisone anyway, in terms of steroid hormones? telling the body there's an emergency. This is why inflammation is suppressed. The way steroid drugs work to suppress inflammation is by telling the body there's an emergency. Lying to the body. Telling, uh, uh, lying to cells. Telling them that there's a tiger at your door. That's not a good thing, folks. Never a good thing. And to, uh, to the list of toxic pharmaceuticals that we talked about, highly toxic pharmaceuticals we talked about in the last segment, Dilantin and Integritol, anti-seizure medicines, you can add the steroid uh, uh, prednisone and other so-called gluco, gluco meaning sugar. Whenever you hear gluc or glyc, you have sugar. Glucocorticoids, sugar, steroid hormones, which is what prednisone is because it helps, because it causes the release of sugar. Anyway. We're talking ketogenic diet, we're talking fats. Love your fats, honor your fats, respect your fats. They will help you pull nutrients out of your salad, out of your Brussels sprouts. If you're an aging woman, if you're, and it doesn't take long to be aging, at least in terms of skin. You know, your skin starts to age around age, around uh, in our 20s. Do you know our skin starts to break down in our 20s for, mo- for many people? That's when we start to exhibit microscopic uh, aging changes in the skin, breakdown of fibers. If you're a kid, and by kid I mean in your 20s, if you're a kid in your 20s or even in your 30s, it's not too late to start working on your skin. Get yourself some retinol, 5%, truth, tr- truthtreatments.com. That's no mere plug for a product. That's an important health tool. Retinol, 5% with vitamin C. And don't think that you're 30 and you don't have to worry about it. It's a lot easier to prevent breakdown in the skin or breakdown anywhere than it is to reverse it. So, and if you're especially older, if you've had a, a, a po- if you're an older woman, you had a hysterectomy, and you're, well, you're an older woman, you're postmenopausal, or if you're a younger woman and you've had a hysterectomy, or if you've had a gallbladder removed, it's extra important to make sure you're using some coconut oil, some butter, or even a vegetable oil carefully with your veggies, because those phytonutrients are going to protect your skin way better than any topical product are the phytonutrients that protect your skin from the sun, but you need to have fat absorption machinery working in the body. And also, it wouldn't hurt to use lecithin and bile salts and your ultimate enzymes from longevity and apple cider vinegar and pancreatin, all of which can support fat absorption at the level of the... uh, at the level of the, of the intestine and the stomach. The, so the ketogenic diet, I call it the modified ketogenic diet, the bright side diet, is 40 to 50% or so fat, 30 to 40% protein. This is the modified ketogenic diet, not the true ketogenic diet, which is 90% fat, but the modified ketogenic diet, the bright side uh, diet, 40 to 50% fat, 30 to 40% protein, 20 to 25% carbs. And, and you don't have to be exact with any of these things. I'm just giving you a rough idea so you can get a picture. Don't have to count calories here. Just be roughly, uh, I don't know, close to half of your calories coming, half your calories coming from fat and uh, maybe a third to a quarter from the other, the other two uh, macronutrients. 20%, 25% from carbs. And when I say carbs, I'm referring to veggies and perhaps fermented grains. Maybe a potato here and there and some quinoa. Zero t- you don't have to have zero tolerance for any of this stuff. Although, the less you eat these things, the better off you're going to be. It's really a question of upside versus downside. And in my opinion, there's certain foods whether, that may have a, an upside to them, but the downside just doesn't make it worth it. Potatoes are a classic example. Potatoes are very tasty, obviously, and the reason we like the taste of potatoes, and by the way, we like the taste of potatoes with butter, is because they're sweet, and the butter, and even regular potatoes are sweet. They have a sweetness to them, not like a sweet potato, but even a regular potato has a sweetness to it, and when you put butter on top of your potato, 
you pull out the sweetness. It amplifies the sweetness. That's why we put butter and sour cream on our potatoes. It pulls out the flavor of the potato. Try it. Try having a potato without butter and then have it with it. And you'll find it, it's way more potato-y with oil. It's not just butter, it's oil. And if you throw salt on it, that amplifies the flavor of the salt. And this is why we find french fries irresistible. And for that matter, any food that's got sugary sweetness to it associated with fat and salt. Pizza, chips, pizza, chips, french fries. These are, I would venture to say, I'm just guessing here, I don't have any numbers, that a huge majority of our calories, huge majority of the American calories, 30% probably, 20 to 30% comes from those, those kinds of, those three foods. Pizza, chips, and fries. I don't know if it's 30%, I'm just guessing, but it's a, it's a huge percent. Everybody likes some version, everybody likes some version of sugar and salt and fat. In fact, that's a title of a book. I think it's, it's called Sugar, Salt, and Fat, or Fat, Salt, Salt, and Sugar. The idea being that we find these three flavors irresistible. If you want to make a lot of money quickly, start a restaurant or find a kind of food that combines those three flavors, whatever that food is. Open up a little stand, have a little food truck, and figure out a way to combine sweet and salt and fat, and you will make a lot of money because human beings find those three flavors absolutely irresistible, the combination of those three things, for good reason, because we need them. So we're hardwired to go for them. Problem is, we're hardwired to go for good fat, avocados and eggs and dairy, we're, uh, and coconut oil. We're uh, uh, hardwired to go for complex sugars, for good kinds of sugars, polysaccharides, and for a little bit of sugar too, simple sugar, because the brain needs it. And we're programmed to go for salt, whether you like it or not, you're going to go for salt. And we've talked a lot about the stupidity of the low salt diet, stupidity. Quote me. And you can't go on a low salt diet anyway, because you're going to go for salt. And salt isn't what we think it is. Everybody calls table salt salt. Table salt is one kind of salt, and a lame kind of salt for that matter. Celtic sea salt is a different salt. Himalayan salt is a different salt. Salt is a chemical word. So when we call, let's talk about low salt diet, we're talking about low sodium chloride diet. Our brain needs the stuff, and it needs sodium and chloride, and you can't go on a low-salt diet. So if you mix in some salt, when you're, uh, some Celtic sea salt in water, you're going to find that you're salt-satisfied. That's how you get, get off of a, a, that's how you eliminate salt cravings, is by going for salt water, Celtic sea salt water, and other minerals for that matter. By the way, it's the stress glands that regulate salt, because salt is important for stress, stress management, stress balancing, stress coping. Anybody, anybody have no stress in their life? The more stress we're under, the more we're going to crave salt. Potatoes are a really good food, by the way. However, you got to be careful with them. They've got potassium, and they've got magnesium, and they've got vitamin C, and they're a pretty darn good source of vitamin C, for that matter. They've got fiber. They've got uh, the B vitamins. They've got phytonutrients. But they also got a problem, aside from the carbs. There's a problem with, uh, with potatoes. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. Take your phone calls as well at 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will get your calls here in just a moment, so hang tight. If you have questions about the Longevity products or you want to purchase any Longevity products, you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine multivitamin mineral drink. Awesome in the morning. I sip on it every morning. It's like rocket fuel in the morning when we tend to be deficient in electrolytes. The combination of the water from your BTT and the electrolytes from your BTT is like rocket fuel. You know that feeling you get, you just wake up in the morning and you had a good night's sleep and you're just groggy, even though you had eight hours and you're just kind of walking slow motion to get the coffee or whatever it is, your caffeine drink, your tea, or whatever it is you're drinking. Well, have some BTT, 
have some BTT powder set out and have uh, some water in the fridge. You want it to be, uh, it, it works better as an energy source as a, to give you energy if it's cold, but it's, it's actually quite tasty warm too. But if you, uh, if you have a cold, really cold, and you uh, mix a little BTT, mix, uh, add the water to the BTT, put a little bit in first. I had a, a, somebody ask me on the phone a couple, I think last week, about how you get that particle, all those particles into solution. If you, make, if you do a small amount of water in your BTT powder and swish it around and get all the particles coated with water, they'll go into the water a little bit more effectively. Anyway, you, you, you add your water and you sip on it in the morning as you're doing your business, getting ready for your day, and it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing the kind of energy you get from this stuff. Why? Well, number one, you're diluting your blood with the water so you get more blood flow to the brain. Number two, one of the reasons you're tired is because you're dehydrated. And so uh, first thing in the morning, if we've gone to the bathroom once or twice, we're dehydrated and we get up and our blood is all cloggy or relatively cloggy. So you drink, you, the water fluidizes the blood uh, from the dehydration. And also the electrolytes, the B vitamins, the electrical nutrients give you energy first thing in the morning. You can find out all about the BTT and all the Longevity products by calling the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or heading over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Okay, from the Journal of the American Medical Association, eating more plant protein associated with lower risk of death. I love this. Check this out. So they do a, a large study, reading here, the largest study to examine the effects of different sources of dietary protein found that intake of proteins from animal sources were associated with a higher mortality rate. So you think, oh my gosh, my hamburgers and my beef and, and my fish, I, that's associated with a higher mortality rate. No, it's not the protein, it's not the beef, it's not the fish, it's the crap that's in the water. It's the crap they feed the cows. Did they do these, were this association done on, on wild game or wild caught fish? No, don't blame the meat. And so there's a book out called The China Study. It's another one of these propaganda books about the problems with meat and animal protein. Make no mistake about it. Animal protein is an incredibly important food. Incredibly. 844-236-6010. And your source of protein does matter, though. Plant protein does have value, and all protein food types have value. You want to mix them up. It's not like you just want animal protein. It's not like you just want whey protein. That's why I've got bone broth protein at brightsidehealth.com and getting great results already. It's only been out a couple of weeks. Great taste and great results. Guy wrote me yesterday, how he, a couple days ago, how he cut his glucogel dose in half, and he has, his knee hasn't felt better. There's glucosamine, of course, and chondroitin in bone broth protein. That doesn't mean whey protein's not important. That doesn't mean pea protein's not important, and vegetable protein's not important, and egg protein's not important, and dairy protein's not important. They're all important. But animal protein's got some stupendously important nutritional value, uh, key nutrients for building, especially. Okay, 844-236-6010. Zach, you've been holding on forever. What's going on? Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Zach? Zach, hey, Zach. Zach. Hey, Zach. Um, What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. good. Where are you in the city? Yeah, NYC? Yeah, yeah. Got All right. Harlem. You're in Harlem. All right. Yeah, All right. Good, good going. Uh, good to talk to you. What, what's up? What's up? I'm 21 and I've had acne and dandruff for six years. Okay. I get uh, milia. Which milia? Like. I need you to speak up, Zach. I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Acne, dandruff, milia. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Cool. All right. Uh, and the milia eventually become like inflamed whiteheads. And okay, stop right there. And right super now, easy. On my cheek. Zach, super okay. easy. Super, 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 super easy. How old? You said you're 21? Yeah. And I've how been tall on the paleo are you? Paleo diet for a year. Paleo diet. A uh, height to weight? Uh, 150 pounds and about six feet. Okay, so you're lean and mean. Yeah. Are I you work uh, out? I weigh you working out? You wiry? Are you ripped? That whole thing? Yeah. What's your hair like? Uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, is that I a weird question? It fall out. We'll say again? It doesn't, doesn't fall out or anything. It's not thin? No. As opposed to maybe thick? Maybe a little thin. Okay. Well, you, you, the re it seems like a silly question to ask, but it's not, because what I'm assessing from you, and this is how you do. A, this is how when I was in, when I was working as, in the pharmacy, this is how I would do a skin consult on the phone. 
what I'm doing is I'm assessing whether you're androgenic or estrogenic, and that's going to have an impact on, see, I can't see your acne, so that's going to give me some signals as to what you're dealing with, the type of acne you're dealing with. Androgens are male hormones, estrogens are female hormones. The kind of acne that you're right. describing, I call androgenic acne. Now, you don't have, you, okay. do you have it on your back yet or on your chest? Occasionally, like a little. Okay, little it's going to get worse. Big. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Here's the deal. When you're dealing with androgenic acne, you're dealing with a, the male hormone testosterone, which is partially cleared out of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system in the liver, have you heard of this, the lymph? You heard that term? Yeah. Okay, that's your sewage system. I the videos on, uh, with Amanda Rito. Okay, good. Okay, good. So, Andrew, you, the kind of acne you're describing will progress to lymphatic acne. And that's when you have it on the back and the chest. So here's the deal. You gotta start working with your male hormones and male hormone nutrients. And by the way, I've got an acne supplement that's gonna have everything, all the stuff I always talk about as far as going to the health food store and pulling it all together. I got an acne supplement coming out this week. I've been formulating it and working on it for a long time. Um, well, I shouldn't say, they tell me it's gonna be bottled and labeled this week. So hopefully it'll, it'll be in the next couple of weeks. These things always take longer than you think. Uh, it's gonna have all these things in it. But in the meantime, you want right away, Zach, right away, a media mente to get zinc 50 milligrams, picolinate, if you're not already doing it. I've been, Are you? I've been doing that for like a month. Have you noticed anything? Not really. Okay, stay on the zinc 50 I'm also, milligrams. I'm also taking two grams of pantothenic acid. Triple it. Doing Take six grams. Doing after meals. Oh, so you've, been, all right. you've been listening to my videos, so you've heard all the oh, stuff. Yeah, on yeah. This. Okay, well, there's more. Everything. Okay, there's more. Okay, so uh, triple the panto. All right, go to six grams. Okay. Is your skin oily? During the summer, yeah. Okay, so you triple that. the panto, triple the pantothenic acid. Uh, you want to make sure you're doing 20,000 IU of vitamin, e, uh, vitamin A. Okay. 400 IU of vitamin E. Get on the ultimate selenium, do 600 micrograms a day. Um, you got to be very, 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 very careful with your sugar. All right. I eat like two bananas a day. That's all uh, you eat for bread, for carb, bread, and starches, and all those things. Yeah. Okay, so then you're good there. Uh, look for any hidden sources. That's very important because insulin will spike up sebum, spike up skin oils. Okay. Make sure you're doing 400 IU vitamin E. Make sure you're doing 400 milligrams a day of uh, uh, alpha lipoic acid. And I got a couple more for you. You're going to do NA. You want to do a couple more things. I'll tell you when we come back from our break. Uh, so hang tight. We got to take a commercial. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're back on the Bright Side talking to Zach uh, about acne and dandruff. Uh, Zach, you there? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go really quickly here. Uh, acne, dandruff, by the way, is acne of the scalp. Same idea. Uh, has to do with fats. It has to do with testosterone. Uh, so what you're going to be doing is all the fatty nutrients I just told you about, uh, vitamin B5, which is a, a water-soluble B vitamin, but very important for fats. Vitamin A, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid, selenium. Uh, you should also be using retinol once a day. Uh, I'm sorry, once a week, once a week, or maybe twice a week. Get my 5% retinol gel. And then the acne on your cheek, the breakout on the cheek, tells me, the, the milia on the cheek is telling me that uh, you got some kind of food issue. And the bananas, you know, the two bananas a day, it's probably not going to have a lot to do with bananas, but bananas are a reactive food. You know, they're one of the more reactive fruits, more medicinal fruits in terms of their nutritional content. So, you know, lay off the bananas, see what, hap see what happens there. I would anyway. And I would be doing a food diary looking for foods that make my oils worse, the sebum, the oily skin worse, and that make the milia worse. So you're looking at male hormones, fats, and specific foods and all the nutrients we just talked about. And topically, retinol. Uh, and also you might want to try, uh, you also want to, might want to try topically apple cider vinegar as well, which has a nice sebum dissolving quality. Se uh, getting sebum off the face is very important if you're dealing with acne. Sebum is inflammatory, and so getting it off the face is extremely important. Do you get ingrown hairs, by the way? Uh, yeah. I yeah, it's part of the whole thing. To try to avoid that, but yeah, well, here's what you want to do. Here's what you want to do. Use your apple cider vinegar after your shave. Hello? Hello? Did I lose Zach? Zach? Hello? Hello. I hear you, Zach. I don't know where you went, but uh, check out the archives. Use apple cider vinegar after you shave. All right, let's move on to John in Michigan. What's going on, John? Good morning. 
Good morning, uh, Ben. I'd just like to let you know, too, that Doc Wallach is going to be in Harbor Springs at his vineyard uh, next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday if you need uh, to take a break and go visit with him at his wonderful bed and breakfast and vineyard. Are you, uh, you're saying that to me personally? Yes. Well, anybody. Pleasant View uh, uh, Winery in, in Harbor Springs. Uh, now, you can does. stay there? John, you can stay at the, at the Yeah, bed vineyard? and breakfast. Yep, bed and breakfast. And, That's awesome. But Does uh, Doc uh, own it? Does Doc okay. own the place? He owns the bed and breakfast? Yep, in Harbor I Springs, didn't, Michigan. Didn't know that. And it's a, a vineyard, too. But he, he Okay, I didn't know he had a vineyard. I didn't know he had a vineyard. I didn't know there was a bed and breakfast there. Do, Doc likes a little bit of wine. He's a, he's a oneophile. He likes his wine. <laughs> it's, it's all good. The weather's beautiful up here. It's a beautiful country. So if you can take a break and get here, I think it would be fun for you, too. And he does do he does do seminars while he's here. He, he, he invites people in. And, and, good advice. Uh, uh, and but my, I, I have a, someone who has uh, symptoms. Two people with symptoms of Parkinson's, and the one person is dealing with a homeopathic doctor in Atlanta, Georgia, and they're looking into the the possibility of uh, fungus and mold and mildew. Okay, I right. you know, John, you're just going to make me make me angry here. So let's let's stop. Parkinson's is a degenerative disease, people. Period. It's Alzheimer's. It's arthritis. It's the same thing. Osteoporosis. It's a degenerative disease. Period. It's caused by the same things that cause the body to degenerate. And this idea of using homeopathy is cute and not fair. And the idea of fungus is cute and not fair. And by that I mean it's this kind of kind of like fatty thing. You know, it's the fad, it's fungus. That's the fad. Fungus. I have fungus. I have candida. Not as much anymore, I have to say. And homeopathy, while I like it medicinally and I've seen some good things with it, it's it's medicine. The brain is breaking down. That's all we got to know. And given the way we live our lives, is it a surprise that our brain breaks down? It shouldn't be. Our brains break down. Like, the brain is running through energy. It's, it's, it's burning through energy. It's got all this electric, electrical activity in it. It's under a severe amount of chemical stresses. And so when we eat crappy for 50 years and we don't supplement for 50 years and we got digestive problems for 50 years and nobody tells us that we have any of these things, well, of course you're going to end up paying the price in the brain. You don't need homeopathy. You don't need a, a fungus to be a problem. Are there fungus there? Probably. That's one of the things that happens when the body breaks down, but it's not caused by the fungus. Okay? okay uh, now, now hang on though, John, because I want to get into this real quick. Uh, did you want to add yeah. to that? You, go ahead. I just wanted to make another comment that a doctor up here, Dr. Ulrich, at eMineral.info, he stated that in his research that it's, uh, there's a boron factor. And also, yeah, uh, but it's not that, factor. John. John, 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 listen. You're going to hear this. There's a boron factor. There's an aluminum factor. There are these different factors. Yes, you need boron. Absolutely. And boron deficiency is common because it's, it's a soil, it, because of soil depletion. So here, yes, that's true. But that's not the cause. Okay. Yes, there's boron deficiency, but you don't take boron and then your Parkinson's goes away. you got to build the body and make it stronger. If you want to take one thing, which I, I never would recommend to make, you know, improve your symptoms, it's electrical nutrients, the electrolytes, potassium and calcium and sodium and good fats and the ketogenic diet. You know, does that make you follow me, John? I don't mean to, you know. Oh no, to be... you're good. I, I, I just uh, everything you say. I'm, uh, I'm. You're the one that has the background that could help, uh, and and I'm just throwing out some information. Do you, making do you sure see how that. powerful what I'm saying is, though, John? Because it oh, yeah. frees us from having to know details. It frees us from testing. It frees us from the medical model. It's our lifestyle. It's how we live our lives, and that's so powerful. Yes, it's. I'm on it, grass-fed beef. There you go. Yeah, That's, what That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. All right, John. I, I want to get a couple more calls. Thanks for bringing that up. God bless you. All right. God bless you as well. Okay, let's go to Eugene. Been holding on forever. Thank you for your patience. What's going on, Eugene? Good morning. Eugene in Oregon or Eugene, Oregon? Hello. Hello, Eugene. Hello. Hello, Eugene. Do we have Eugene? Oh my gosh. Eugene, Eugene cannot hear me, but we're connected. Hello. Okay. Eugene, I'm going to let you go here. I'm going to get, I want to get some calls. Okay. I'm sorry, Eugene. I can't hear you. Call back if you like. Uh, Diane, what's going on? Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Diane. Yes, I just want to call you. I um, have been using your products for a while now. And Which, the Truth products or the Longevity, longevity or Truth? The, Which, your products, your um, skincare. Your, my skincare, uh, my Truth skincare products. Yes, yes. And my daughter is 35. I'm 73. She said, oh, Mom, that's for older people. No, 
Well, all of a sudden, uh, everybody's noticing my face, and she had to go out and buy some milk. <laughs> and I was at the beauty shop on Saturday, and the girl there said, Wow, what do you use on your face? <laughs> I said, Everybody's been noticing. I'm 73. I was a wrinkled up old Grayson. You know? That's awesome. <laughs> you know what, Diana? So, go ahead. I'm so excited. I mean, I, I'm like, I don't. I mean, it's okay if I look younger, but that's not important. But now that everybody's saying, wow, what are it's you a, doing? It's a, yeah, you know, here's the thing, though. It's, you've also changed the health of the skin. You've changed the quality of the skin. You haven't super... That's why the results get better. You notice they get better and better over time, that they accrue, they build up, the results. Yeah. It's because yeah. you're feeding the skin. You're nutriating the skin. And this is a concept I pioneered. I, I learned... It was just common sense to me to use nutrients on the skin and then transdermal factors, but I got... My skills got more and more perfected. And as I saw the results, I just went hard, big time, into this idea of driving nutrients into the skin. And that's what the truth is. It's the culmination of my 32 years of skincare formulation, the idea of learning how to deliver nutrients to the skin, and that's the comments that you get. That, that's the results you get, is comments. People notice it, because they're not used to seeing skin that looks like that. Thank you so much for Thank saying you. that, Diana. I appreciate it. God bless you. And Thank I've been you. using it on my neck, on my arms. I mean, I... Just, everywhere, right? Go Head everywhere to toe. <laughs> You got skin everywhere. This idea of just face skin and you got skin everywhere. If it's really going to feed your skin, it's going to feed the skin on your big toe as much as it is on your nose or on your face. So thank you so much, Diane. Thank you. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Okay, that's truthtreatments.com, by the way. Truthtreatments.com. You'll find our Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. And what you just heard from Diane, I've been hearing for a long time, and especially over the last year and year and couple months that we've been selling our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Bob in Minneapolis. What's up, buddy? I think you're going to get the last word here. Okay, good morning. I'll be quick. I have three questions. Yes, of the unstable sir. of the uh, unsaturated oils, which is most unstable, poly or mono. Number okay. two, digestive enzymes or pancreatic enzymes like lipase. Uh, does it only digest with the fats in the digestive tract, or does it transverse into the blood and digest visceral fat as well? And number ah. three, and number three, you speak of uh, phase uh, the liver is phase one filter. Are there other phases, and if, uh, how many, and can you name them? Oh, th those are great questions, but I, I'm just out of time. Let's see if I get real quickly. Mono unsaturated are more stable than poly because you got more of the unsaturated part in the poly. Poly means many. Uh, lipase probably isn't going to digest visceral fat, but it might, di it might help with fat in the blood, absolutely. And then there are two phases of, di of uh, detox, phase one and phase two, and they're both extremely important and fascinating. They involve the liver and nutrition as well. I wish I had more time, but that's it, Bob. Thanks so much. Those are great questions. Um, I'll see if I can address them tomorrow, so uh, you might want to listen in tomorrow. Thanks for your call. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our skin health products at Truth Treatment. Com, our longevity products at brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and our bone broth protein and burger max at brightsidehealth.com we'll talk to you all tomorrow have a wonderful beautiful spectacular awesome day i'm pharmacist ben bye for now